uh, okay, so in computer graphics class, we will uh, go through several interesting topics. So let's start that uh, highlight overview of the class uh, using the course website, uh, which is here. So you can visit this website, which is uh, under my main page. If you look at the computer graphics uh, link, uh, you will see the uh, PowerPoints, some sample codes, uh, and actually that's it, but it is enough. Uh, and the very quick objective of this class is uh, to teach you the modeling and rendering stages of the 3D graphics pipeline. Uh, we will not do animation stage, so we will focus on two of the three fundamental stages in computer graphics, which are modeling and rendering. I have this uh, email address uh, that I commonly and uh, frequently use. So please prefer this one when you want to ask something, when you ask for an officer, for instance, uh, we can schedule something after uh, talking over that. And we can even solve your problem with emails so uh, we can communicate with this address mainly keep this in mind uh, so this is from a previous semester i forgot but obviously this doesn't apply to you uh, and for the uh, grading part i will give you three programming assignments uh, the first one you will be creating a scene and rendering it using ray tracing uh, so you won't use any 3D graphics API, you will just uh, use the uh, equations we learn in the rendering part uh, and you will produce that image uh, for your uh, first assignment. Then you will do the same rendering using OpenGL Open library, which is uh, the standard graphics library in computer graphics. Uh, and in the third one, we will uh, we will uh, add some shader capabilities on top of that to increase uh, realis realism. Um, and there will be one midterm uh, in the middle of the semester. Uh, the good GPU is not required at all. Um, don't worry about that. You will, uh, the assignments you will work with uh, will be run, will run on a common laptop. Uh, so midterm followed by the final exam, which is comprehensive. Uh, okay, so in the uh, intro. So before going to the intro, let's go through the topics very quickly. Like uh, we will, our task in computer graphics is to create nice pictures. Actually, moral of the story is that. So that's why we will, uh, after getting the intro, we will talk about the displays uh, where these images appear and the images themselves uh, and the human color reception system. Uh, so the tricks we do to uh, make it make the artificial images more realistic for us. And then uh, the real action begins with the ray tracing, actually. Uh, the algorithmic action begins here, uh, where you will uh, convert <clears throat> the... Uh, so you, are, you will be given a 3D scene uh, in some format and uh, you will be given materials, uh, the colors, the base colors of the uh, objects in that scene. And then you will uh, use the ray tracing algorithm to compute uh, colors for each pixel, actually. Uh, and those colors will be uh, depending on the light sources, their locations, the viewing directions. So there are many parameters involved. 
uh, that's why ray tracing is, uh, as we will also see later in the introduction, uh, ray tracing is a, a big topic and it's a topic you need to pay attention. Uh, so it extends to two, two weeks actually, it is that big. Uh, then we will, uh, instead of using colors like RGB uh, predefined colors, we will get those colors from images and we will uh, we call those textures and we map those textures to, to 3d models like actually uh, i do here in in this uh, example in my 3d model uh, i uh, take map it uh, with uh, the with a texture uh, texture um, then comes the data structures used in computer graphics uh, like how we represent surfaces, uh, basically like explicit triangle mesh, mesh-based representation versus implicit representations, like uh, representing it through some color fields. Uh, so these models, 3D models, how we represent them efficiently is the main topic of that week. Uh, and then comes some transformation action uh, this is the part where we will do basic linear algebra because transformation is all about matrices. A matrix is not just a, a block of three by three numbers. It is uh, obvious it is that, but uh, the intuition behind that is it's uh, when that matrix is applied to a vector, vector of positions, uh, it moves those positions in some way. So we will talk about those transformations uh, that happens at the object level or at the viewing level. And at the object level, it is like how you uh, rotate this object, okay, 90 degree around a particular axis or around a different axis. Uh, so it is about modeling transformations and viewing transformations are similar in that case, you have these different coordinate frames. So your 3D model, it lives in its own uh, object space. We need to transform it into the ca camera space. Uh, and once it is there, we also need to project it to the camera image plane. So these are all uh, actions that uh, move points around, okay, from one location to another. Uh, and weaving transformations uh, will cover that. Uh, clipping and culling uh, is uh, about your viewing volume. Once your objects are in your view space, camera space, we will uh, do further actions uh, for rendering. And then comes the rasterization, uh, which is the task of uh, filling in the details actually, because uh, you have uh, triangles in a sense, uh, each 3D model is a set of triangles, but we give only the triangle vertices, the three vertex, the three corners of a given triangle. In rasterization, uh, we assume that that triangle is already uh, transformed to the image plane. We then fill the in-betweens. So how do you fill the colors, how do you interpolate the colors to get the uh, uh, to get the realistic output. And then we will talk about GPU, graphics processing unit, uh, which is uh, which has its own memory. So everything you have programmed so far is in CPU. So you have your CPU memory. So using from there, we will go to a separate memory. So we will dump our data into that graphics card memory. Uh, and then graphics processing unit, the GPU, will use that memory and to process every vertex in parallel. Because these are all independent actions to compute their colors, to do their transformations. Uh, so it will be extremely fast. You will not do any parallel programming. Uh, in the background, it will be done for you. So we, we will talk about those mechanisms. Uh, it is 
we will see some GLSL codes, graphics library shader language codes. Uh, but before going there, we will also talk about CPU level graphics programming, which is done by OpenGL. Uh, yeah, so we will see lots of 3D graphics related APIs in that week. Uh, and then we will talk about uh, shadows again to increase realism. Uh, and we then talk about some modeling issues like what's a curve, uh, how it is defined, uh, what is a surface, uh, uh, so how to model a model using set of uh, surface pieces. Uh, or curve pieces if it is in 2D. If it is in 3D, we will be using surfaces. So this part goes to the uh, modeling part of our course, along with this data structure part. It is also about modeling. Uh, but mostly I can say that this is more on rendering. Uh, and transformations, uh, moving stuff around. So, Yes, okay. Uh, with that, now I will. So, did I miss anything about the administration stuff? Uh, I don't think so. But if you have any questions before uh, passing to the slides, uh, you can shoot them now about the way we will progress, proceed. Uh, uh, yes, so uh, computer graphics, okay, so there is the zoom. Uh, okay, so. Let's do the introduction then. Uh, uh, okay, so in this class, so I am your instructor, Yusuf Sahilol, by the way, I forgot to put it here, but anyway. Uh, so computer graphics, there are multiple definitions of this uh, topic. Uh, so let's see some popular ones. Any use of computers to create and manipulate images. Yes, so as I mentioned in the beginning with a sentence, our ultimate goal is to create a 2D image actually using 3D content. Of course, the content doesn't have to be in 3D. You can also, it can also be in 2D. Uh, so adding effects on that will still count as computer graphics tools and algorithms used to make such pictures, uh, software and hardware can be considered as computer graphics. What you need to show other people, your dreams. What you need, computer graphics is what you need in order to show other people your dreams. Uh, some philosophical definition comes. Uh, so maybe, it can be more impressive. These two slides make a good definition. Like this is the same object. This is also the same object. Obviously we prefer the latter because of the realism involved. Uh, so this constitutes so the rendering part of computer graphics. Uh, but uh, there is also in the background, some modeling happens here. If you look at it, uh, if you think carefully, first we have some modeling happens, we have this 3D model uh, as a triangle mesh or as a union of uh, curved surfaces, uh, Bezier surfaces or nerve surfaces. Uh, so there are ways to model this or actually for modeling a teapot or any other object, uh, you don't need to be very talented actually. If you are already skilled, uh, and you can even create it from scratch, but there are uh, tools, modeling tools 
that uh, bring you there, even if you don't have sufficient uh, skills. Like, uh, let's talk about them as well. Uh, so the ones I remember now on the fly. Uh, so in, I think there is this uh, three sweep. What was the name of a three sweep? Okay, three sweep. Uh, so this is one tool I particularly like. Uh, it is published in a graphics conference, SIGGRAPH, and uh, SIGGRAPH Asia. Uh, SIGGRAPH is also a different conference. So these are the best two conferences in computer graphics, by the way. So here, let's talk about modeling. So you have a 2D image to begin with. Uh, and you need to create a 3D model out of it. So this is a cube. You can create it uh, yourself as well, like, uh, but this gives the idea easily. So the idea in this paper is you first define a profile using two strokes, which is square in this case. And the third stroke, as you draw it, uh, it automatically aligns the 3D model you draw uh, it aligns its projection with the edges detected on this 2D image. So this is a combination of 3D and 2D algorithms. So here, then you have the model and you also map this texture. texture. Uh, so now that you have the model, you can rotate it and then take the screenshot and you have another picture. Okay, so you can also see this as an image editing tool by getting help from some 3D, uh, like Photoshop. It uses lots of computer graphics in the background. So you shouldn't treat that as a computer vision project. It is a combination of vision and graphics, where computer vision means uh, it's, it is about image processing. So here we don't do image processing in that sense, like filters, etc. We use images as our final destination. But coming there uh, is what makes computer graphics. OK, so this is the modeling part of graphics. So here is, I want to model this ways. Uh, I find a picture online, right? So because I am not that skilled, I can do it from scratch. Then using this and then some little action. So this is an interactive. Uh, algorithm not fully automatic, uh, but still it gives a good idea uh, about how you model things. And by the way, you can enhance this algorithm so you don't have to start with a square profile. So if you uh, if your first two vectors directions are not perpendicular to each other, then they create uh, a circle instead of a square, and then you do the third action as such, like you give the general movement direction. Uh, yeah, so there are many things that can be updated here and hence still, but this is the fir first, uh, it gives a good idea. It introduces a good idea. Uh, like we are modeling uh, objects and then texture mapping and then creating new images. This is the idea of this paper, actually. So I show you for the modeling part. And for complicated pictures, uh, models, you find their pictures and you model them using uh, different pieces. OK, so as you can see, it is 2x speed, but I can also make it another 2x from my end. Uh, so. Once you have the model, you can duplicate it, rotate it. Uh, yes, as you can see. And by the way, here, after the modeling here, so the, now this is the computer vision part because I directly process this image to remove those pixels and then replace them using average pixel colors around. So it is called in painting. So this is a computer vision action, for instance. We are not dealing with this action in this class. 
We rather get those that model do some rotations, transformations, and projection. And this is what we do in computer graphics. Uh, yes, yeah, so here, uh, any other. So once you have the model, you can duplicate them, right? Uh, put lots of them. Uh, and with almost all algorithms, this algorithm also comes with limitations. Like I can also show that, but before that, there is also other metaphors you can do to model stuff. So here, in this case, you don't need any picture at all. You uh, draw something manually. So at this point, you need some skills, even if it's a very weird drawing, still you have to do some kind of sketching. These are called sketches. Then you bring one of the uh, predefined 3D primitives here and make it align with your stuff. So here, in this case, they first use, let's see, uh, they first use, I think, this model and then they bring up a cylinder for the base. Uh, then they merge it. So, so what they show here is the number of seconds you deal with uh, is much less, much higher in this old work. So this is actually, this is their work on the right hand side. Uh, instead of working on an image, they draw, they draw their own image. Again, it requires some skills, but once they do that, then they do their sweeping tactics. So here they don't use any primitives, okay? So what they do is they define this profile and they redefine. So it is done in nine seconds. Here on the other end, they bring it, uh, it aligns with sketch. Yeah, so it shows good points of this current algorithm. Uh, okay, so this is the failure cases. Uh, so since this sweeping action follows uh, uh, the set of edges in 2D, uh, it has no sense of depth. So as human beings, we know that toothbrush, uh, it narrows down as we go towards the end. So that kind of information is not there uh, in the default setting. So that's why you end up with this perfume bottle because there is no way that tells you to shrink it down as you go towards the end. So this is not a perfect solution then. Another problem can be uh, the wrong edge direction that can be due to shadows, for instance, or other kind of noises. In that case, your output will uh, suck actually. Uh, yes, so this is modeling part about, uh, this is modeling uh, using some help. Uh, this is music. Uh, and so what else? So another modeling tool is Martian cubes. So once I am here, so here we implicitly model stuff. Okay, so actually what we have here is, I don't know if this shows something, but yeah, kind of this shows something. So you have this blue object hidden, embedded in this grid, and the values in this grid vertices, these are scholars, so this is called a scholar field also. Values in this field, uh, like values in the, on the grid, the red vertices, they, impl they imply, they implicitly define the blue target shape I end up with. So what are these values? These are um, most commonly signed distance functions. So what is the signed distance of this red vertex to the closest surface patch? Okay, this is positive because it's outside, but later if you look something here, it is going to be negative because it's inside. So you then uh, merge 
uh, you then use inf this information to extract the blue surface uh, because every cube in this grid it defines uh, some part of the object. And here, this is the good part of this video, I think. So from each cube, uh, you obtain some subset of triangles on your uh, shape. And uh, so this is a synthetic example. Everything is clear. Syn uh, the sine distance is defined using sphere equation, but you can use this to create any kind of uh, 3D models. So this is another way of modeling things, right? So it is quite different from the previous sweep action I have shown you. Uh, uh, but this is also, uh, this belongs to computer graphics. So how we create stuff. Okay. Uh, then comes, so from this picture, I can immediately talk about another application here. So in computer graphics, so this is high resolution and this one's uh, low resolution, right? Actually, we are trying to represent the same object, but with a limited budget here. So we use less number of pieces here. And then it makes your rendering less realistic, also your modeling less realistic. So. Uh, there are trade-offs. Uh, yeah. So these are the topics I can mention about uh, the video. Uh, so now let's switch back to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> um, yeah, so Here, uh, I, okay, we, I think we are sufficiently motivated now how, why we uh, do computer graphics. We model this thing as we have seen uh, very briefly in the YouTube session, and we then render it realistically. We will see stuff about rendering throughout the semester, uh, actually beginning next week. Uh, yeah, and there is also the animation aspect. The, the third aspect of computer graphics is animation. It is uh, the way we bring life to these objects. So uh, for instance, you let this teapot fall, free fall, and you also model a plane here for the floor. Then when this hits that plane, it may be, if it is made out of rubber uh, and there is a, long distance to travel, then it jumps back. So that is that defines an animation, for instance, uh, or it breaks, right? It is another animation. So animation and physics, they go together. So physically based animation is a whole different uh, class you can take because it's a huge topic. So we will, uh, I will show you some action on that domain as well in this class, but uh, it requires a separate attention, that animation business, physically based or uh, otherwise like keyframe animations uh, uh, are also popular given keyframes, like some, this is one frame and another frame is a different uh, pose of this teapot. Unfortunately, this is not a human. Human poses are better defined. But anyway, then you fill the in-betweens automatically. You interpolate the in-betweens, uh, and then you get a different kind of animation. Or another way to get animations is, as I recall suddenly, uh, we can uh, go to again this. Uh, Thing so line of action. I think there was a paper like that. So okay, so here this line of action idea from caricature world, uh, comics world. So it defines some poses, right? Uh, in the comics world, only one line 
called line of action. It gives you the essence of the motion. Then you use these lines to get your own animation, for instance. I don't know if they show some kind of animation here, but okay, so uh, animation is a set of frames. Uh, okay, like here, uh, this is an animation. So they have used that line of action metaphor to define that animation, but here the keyframe thing I mentioned is maybe this is one frame you have, and this is another frame you have, then you can fill the in-betweens automatically by using the corresponding points between two frames and then by going through the corresponding, going through the paths over the corresponding points. Yes, uh, and for the fun of it, let's also watch this till the end. Is there... Yeah, so obviously animation is a very good uh, and important aspect of computer graphics. It brings life to the models you have. Uh, and this paper has nothing to do with rendering actually, right? So it, it focuses on modeling and animation. Uh, so yeah, but uh, my message here is uh, that we have three uh, main mechanisms in graphics. These are modeling, rendering, and animation. Uh, and now, okay, this is also mentioned here. Uh, CG consists of three main subfields, which are modeling, rendering, and animation. Modeling, so let's also go through them by a, a slide. Uh, we have this so-called piecewise linear surfaces. Every piece is linear, like a quad or another polygon, like a triangle. Uh, and you stitch them together to end up with your model which can be nonlinear. Many modeling techniques exist, like the ones I have shown you, or another one can be uh, the creation of models from multiple images. It is called photogrammetry. Uh, and that, that type of modeling is also very popular, especially thanks to our uh, cell phones these days that can take amazing pictures. Uh, there are applications like Meshroom is the most popular one. Let me also introduce that real quick. Uh, Meshroom, like Mushroom, but this is Meshroom. Uh, I don't know if they thought about that joke, but anyway. So in the Meshroom, you essentially take your pictures uh, I think they, so where did they give the idea? Maybe in the beginning. Uh, okay, here, so these are all pictures taken. Here, it is the action. And then using photos, you can model your 3D shape fully automatically. So this is different than the sweeping video we have seen before. Uh, in in here, you don't have any interaction. Everything goes fully automatic. Uh, yes, and actually a very primitive version of this, I have uh, done that kind of in my master days. So if we look at that uh, computer graphics action, if this works, first of all, okay. So, in the, uh, this is not the power point. Yeah, so this, I need to switch back again. Sorry about the switches, but, uh, okay. So in this uh, modeling tool, we are given a set of images and we use some computer vision to compute the silhouettes. So these are the images. And another input is a model, 
a very basic model that you can find anywhere, or you can even create this automatically. This is a sphere model. Then you uh, move these sphere vertices uh, along their normals, inverse of their normals, and the, you make them stop if the projection of the current 3D location to these images all fall to the border, to the white and black part of the images in all images. It means that obviously I am at the border, so stop. So an idea as simple as this can lead to cool results. So this, if this is your object to begin with, then you can deform this sphere to un until that uh, position. Actually, there are some tricks you can do further, like to get more details uh, using uh, not images, but at this time you can use range scan laser data, but this is not our topic here. So I want to give uh, some pictures here maybe quickly. Okay, so this is one way of modeling. So this connects to the Meshroom application because they also use multiple images, uh, but the, their obvious advantage is they don't do any kind of calibration. They do everything automatically. Here, I use a significant amount of time to calibrate multiple cameras uh, so that the images are consistent. Uh, yes. Uh, so if we come back to our slides, another modeling application I have just shown you because of this thing, many modeling techniques exist, yes. Uh, let's continue. Rendering, the second aspect. You are given a scene in the form of an XML file or any other thing actually. Uh, then your task is to convert this into an image, okay? Uh, and into a realistically rendered image. You can be given this scene as a set of uh, objects, uh, and then you have to do some uh, lightning, lighting. You have to consider the lights around you uh, and material types, shadows, reflections, refractions uh, to get this better images. And there are many techniques like backwards rendering using uh, rasterization or forward rendering using ray tracing. We will see both of them. Uh, and animation is the process of bringing life to the virtual objects, like you have seen in the Toy Story movies or any other multiple movies. Uh, and the goal of computer graphics is to create realistic images as fast as possible. So this is a CG generated image. Uh, And this requires a serious amount of computation, uh, but it can be done in parallel. That's why we, the more the resources, the better, the, the faster the output. Uh, but in this class, you will not be doing that kind of computing. We will do some ray tracing, but at a very basic level uh, and with, a, with relatively easier scenes. That's why a, a single laptop will be sufficient for you. Uh, so besides creating images, realistic images, uh, computer graphics also uh, goes for uh, illustrations, like education purposes, uh, how something works or how it is created. <clears throat> uh, designing, small scale or big scale objects like <clears throat> an apartment, which is a big scale architectural action, but you can also design small scale stuff like a piece of an engine. <clears throat> uh, you can all do all kinds of renderings. It can be photorealistic rendering, like we will do with ray tracing, but you can also do non-photorealistic images Sometimes they are demanded. Uh, you can also go geek and create other stuff that looks cool. 
and we use computer graphics in video games because video games include all those three aspects we have been talking about modeling all these characters all the objects around the floor even uh, ships so everything is first modeled either from scratch manually using technical artists which is mostly done in commercial games and uh, commercial products by the way because they have the resources but a big array of computer graphics research is to do this modeling uh, with as less effort as possible on the human side. Uh, and other than modeling, video games also require you good rendering, like uh, realistic rendering, uh, texture mapping, they all go to rendering, these shadows, Right, these are not models. These are just rendered to the scene using the models and their interaction with the scene. And finally, animation, like you make this guy walk, right? Probably, uh, then it makes a video game actually. Or you don't take any comments from the user. You just make them watch, then you have a movie, but it is designed otherwise the same way as video games. You can add visual effects to your videos, which is what augmented reality business does actually. Uh, and those effects are coming with computer graphics. They are called GFX, <laughs> visual effects. Uh, we use computer graphics in tools like uh, computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing tools. So, what what are they, for instance? Like uh, the so we we model some pieces on those tools. Uh, we make education simulation and training possible with computer graphics. Uh, so you provide this virtual environment to the pilot, for instance, and let him or her use the control panel and see the outputs on screen without even going there, without really breaking stuff. Uh, and by their mistakes, you can make them redo the things. And all this, this is made possible with graphics. Model the environment, virtual environment, uh, render it appropriately and then probably animate it. Here in this scenario, you need to animate uh, some kind of motion, right? Because this plane will move, fly. Scientific visualization demands computer graphics. Like they need to see, they have this huge data of proteins, viruses, etc. They want to see how one protein interacts with the other. So then comes this scientific visualization part. Uh, you can, if you can model one protein, and if you model another protein, then you can compute the optimal uh, alignment between them. Uh, it can give you an idea about how they attach together uh, and the way they attach that information can be useful in the design of a medicine. So all this stuff is connected. And at some point, computer graphics comes, as you can see. And both 2D and 3D rendering falls in the uh, topic of computer graphics. Like on mobile games, we are mostly dealing with 2D uh, renderings. Uh, but in this class, we will uh, focus on 3D graphics. We will learn a little bit about all these three subfields. So I will even talk something about animations as I mentioned before, uh, but the focus will be on rendering. Yes, this is repeated here as well. Uh, so again, the main task is to generate a realistic image on screen. Uh, so it begins by some scene definition uh, and then we 
uh, convert this to an image that goes to display. Uh, yeah, so this is about perception stuff, not that important. Uh, the display devices and perception, so we should also mention that, let's do that. Uh, Graphics algorithm must take into consideration the target display device and the viewer's capabilities. So first of all, our eyes have some limitations to begin with. And it, they come with a particular spectrum. So you cannot see beyond that. Uh, that's why there is no need to generate colors that go beyond that. Uh, also about resolution, no need to render an eight thousand bytes image if the target display is just 2k so this is not about human capability but it's about your current hardware right so you don't have to create the pixel information for 8000 pixels because if the device is supports only 2000 on the screen then you will down sample this to 2k anyway so then you will have been doing uh, unnecessary computations here. So you need to take the device, display device capability into account while modeling or rendering. Similarly, the perception from human side, uh, no need to render tiny details that cannot be perceived by a human. Uh, so human eyes can capture the, small differences at lower intensities, like from black to dark gray, you can detect that. But at higher intensities, like from white to less white, it is really a very uh, difficult thing for human eyes. So we mostly don't catch that difference. So this is taken into account in our display devices, as we will see later in gamma correction uh, business. Uh, also, the output of rendering is an image, also known as a frame, which can be directly sent to a display device. Uh, yes, uh, or saved for uh, offline viewing. Yeah, so this is not a very informative slide actually. Yeah, we are talking about images and, and they go, so frame is a special word for you maybe. So we call each image a frame actually in computer graphics and set of frames make up, uh, makes up a video. Uh, so the, this slide actually connects us to the uh, next set of slides, which is about images. Uh, and display devices and the visual system. And with that, uh, I can finish uh, because we have already discussed these things. Uh, one last thing can be about a textbook. So this is a very popular one in computer graphics. It is uh, taught by many courses used by many courses. So we also recommend this, I can recommend this. Uh, you don't have to obtain that, but uh, this is a good reference book. Uh, yes, so address, website, I have went through them. Uh, and I have even shown you a couple of modeling and animation videos no. already. So I don't remember if these are those probably not, probably these are different videos, so you should check them out. And there is also something about rendering here. Uh, and about the research, uh, the finest place to see the up-to-date, uh, most uh, technological computer graphics papers uh, is SIGGRAPH, so you should, at least watch the technical papers trailer every year to quickly see what is going on in the area. Uh, okay, so with that, I will uh, stop for this introduction session. Uh, and yeah, next 
next after a break we can talk about the next set of slides okay see you later <laughs>